Test, 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 test. Kia ora and welcome to our next lesson on direct tax and indirect tax. As per usual, it is your fantastic, enthusiastic teacher, Mr. Pietkiewicz and bro sir. And also our fantastic Mr. Teddy who is going for the Nobel Peace Prize. Okay, make sure you hashtag Teddy Bear. He needs to be a social media hit for anybody to take him seriously. Okay, he's got his uh, lava lava on today. He's trying to, you know, look a bit pretty for you all. He's had some positive feedback. Okay, positive feedback. Fantastic. Okay, so today's lesson, direct tax and indirect tax. We ready to rock and roll? I think so. So here we go. What is the difference between direct tax and indirect tax? What are examples of indirect tax? And what are the effects of changes in direct tax and indirect tax? Wow, it's going to be a pretty full-on lesson today, but it's going to be done in minutes. Ready, Mr. Teddy? Yep. Was that a nod? I don't know. All right, here we go. Direct tax. The term direct tax generally means a tax paid directly to the government by the persons on whom it is imposed. Now, we are usually those persons as taxpayers. Okay, and that is what's imposed on us, this beautiful word called tax. Taxes on income, company profits, and wealth are all directly paid to the government. Okay, they're directly paid to the government. And so, in a sense, you have essentially no choice in whether or not you pay direct tax. You have no choice. Essentially, you can, you know, you could actually evade it or you could avoid it. Okay, but, you know, think about that first, okay? Pay your taxes or the IRD will come after you. They will come after you. Now, here's indirect tax. Indirect tax. It's a tax collected, okay? It's collected by an intermediary, or which is also known as a third party. Okay, so let's use a retail store as an example, and they are selling these veggies here, because we know how much we love our veggies. Okay, so it's a tax collected by the retail store from the person who bears the ultimate burden of the tax. So just say that to yourself slowly. Okay, and the person who bears that burden is usually the consumer. But also, another business could purchase from another business. Why not? Okay, so the retail store will then file a tax return at a later date. In New Zealand, we call that a GST tax return. And we forward the tax proceeds to the government. So this retail store is going to file a GST tax return and forward the GST to the government. Okay, and as well as the tax return. Okay, that's what indirect tax is. Here are some examples of an indirect tax. GST, that stands for goods and services tax. We have a sales tax and also an excise tax, which is a tax on fuel, liquor and cigarettes. These taxes are all imposed by the government, the beautiful government. Beautiful. So what are the effects on the aggregate demand and aggregate supply economic model? So let's take, for instance, an increase in income tax rates. If our tax rates go up, which remember is a direct tax, income tax rates is direct tax. So say if that goes up, then what's going to happen? We're going to have less money to spend. Now we know a factor of AD is what exactly? Total consumption spending. Okay, so we have less money, we're going to spend less. Our consumption decreases. So what's going to happen to AD? Look at this. AD, boom. AD is going to shift inward to the left. So make sure you label it AD1 and you do your arrows. Cool, easy marks. Easy marks. Now, if there's a decrease in our income tax rate, that's completely the opposite. We now have more money to spend. 
or should I say consume. So essentially, AD is going to increase because total consumption will increase with a decrease in income tax rates. Okay, AD1, label it, boom, and boom. Please make a genuine effort to make your curves look pretty. Okay, I'm just doing a rush job today. I'm sorry for that, but my handwriting is atrocious. Okay, AD, label it. Thank you. Okay, so if there's an increase in GST, now we're talking about indirect tax. Remember that, indirect tax. An increase in GST, right? That means that the goods and services provided by firms are now more expensive because there's an increase in GST. So if something is more expensive, our firms are less likely to supply. Okay, so in this instance, there's an increase in GST. So what's going to happen to the aggregate supply curve? It is going to shift to the left. Okay, it's going to cost more. Okay, it's going to cost more for these firms to produce their goods and services. That's probably a better way of explaining it. Okay, an increase in GST. It's going to cost more for these firms to produce their goods and services. Now, if there's a decrease in GST, the opposite. It's going to cost firms less. Okay, it's going to cost firms less to produce their goods and services. So that means they can supply more. The AS curve will shift to the right. Draw your arrows, draw your arrows and label your graphs, please. Thank you very much. Teddy, you still with me? He's still here. You can say hi to him if you want to. Say hi. No? Sweet. Okay. Effects of direct and indirect taxes. Now, let's take this scenario, okay? If an economy experiences growth, so if there's going to be growth in the economy, there's going to be a high probability of government revenue increasing. Okay, the government is going to collect more in taxes. Alright, it's going to collect more in taxes. Okay, additional workers are going to be employed because firms are going to be increasing their output. Okay, firms are increasing their output. Because why? There is growth in the economy. So they're going to employ more people. Now, these people are obviously going to be paid income. So these workers are going to receive an increase in their income because they are now employed. Beautiful. You see how it all ties in? And so the government, they're going to receive an increase in direct tax. Hey, remember, that's a tax on our income. Yeah. So when workers spend their increases in income, Firms are going to pass on the increased amount of indirect tax to the government. Because these workers, right, they're going to be buying goods and services. They're going to be paying GST. And the firms are going to collect that GST and then pass it on to the government. Beautiful. I hope that explains it. Boom. Remember, if you're unsure, please Facebook me. Okay, Facebook me. That's cool. If you're not on my class, I can be found at facebook.com slash brosur. And please do the online quiz in the video description. Get instant feedback on your understanding of direct tax and indirect tax. Instant feedback. Got to love it. Got to love it. Now, we're going to end again on another famous economist. This guy is called Muhammad Yunus. He is the man. Here's his famous quote. I made a list of people who needed just a little bit of money, and when the list was complete, there were 42 names. The total amount of money they needed was $27. He was shocked. Okay, He was shocked. 42 names, and all they needed was $27. So Muhammad Yunus, who is he? He has got another fantastic smile. All our economists are smiling. They're happy. Born on the 28th of June, 1940. He's a Bangladeshi economist and founder of the Grameen Bank. Please Google that bank. That bank is seriously amazing. Okay, that is an institution that provides microcredit. 
So provide small loans to poor people who possess no collateral. Isn't that just amazing? What a really genuine, awesome guy. Okay, so he does this to help his clients establish credit worthiness and financial self-sufficiency. Now, Teddy, pay attention. You there, Teddy? All right. In 2006, Eunice and Grayman, okay, they received the Nobel Peace Prize. The Nobel Peace Prize. That's what Teddy's aiming for. The Nobel Peace Prize. Okay. Eunice himself has received several other national and international honors. Google Muhammad Yunus, please, and the Gramian Bank. Amazing. You'll be mind blown. Now that brings us to the end of uh, today's lesson. There's going to be plenty more coming up very shortly. I believe the next one's going to be on aggregate demand and the exchange rate. Make sure you subscribe to our videos. Okay, we've already had five people so far. Fantastic. Keep on doing it. Have a great week. Love economics. It is an amazing subject. It takes the world by storm. Okay, have a great night. Peace out. Sure.